Starting off at number 10 is X-Men Mutant Apocalypse. This is a game that blended two genres together. You had a beat-em-up and a platformer, and you had 90s nostalgia in a little shell, and you could not go wrong with this one. It took a little bit of platforming from the older games that you had from like Mario, and it took a little bit of fighting element from like Mega Man, and you had a nice little genre. It was 90s because it took from the comics and it took from the TV show that was popular now, which has been getting a revival. It's well deserved. You had a lot of p pixel animation from all the five of the X-Men mutants. So you had Cyclops and you had his beam. It was so good. And then you had, you know, Gambit. Uh, my go-to was Wolverine, just FYI. I would always pick Wolverine because his hack and slash abilities, his nice combos. You had over-the-top bosses. The patterns were very nice. You couldn't just, like, it would change a little bit, but it was most of the time stay the same. That's where you get the Mega Man feel. The Sentinel was my favorite boss, uh, even though I, I like Magneto, but Sentinel, he was over the top, he was huge. It's kind of like an RPG where you got like a really big boss and your character is so small compared to him. I enjoyed this game. I always will go back to it. It's definitely something you need to check out if you have not played it before. At number 9 is another classic beat-em-up and that is Final Fight 3. The reason Final Fight 3 is on there and not the other ones is because I enjoyed the new characters and two of the old characters, you had Guy and Hagar, and the just the craziness of the story. You know, normally a beat em up is you have to go save somebody, either the sister or the girlfriend. This one is just a gang has overtaken the downtown area and you need to stop the gang. You can pick from all the characters and you can actually have a couple people be together if you want to do co-op. I loved it. It was a great beat em up. The end boss was fun. You had to either overwhelm them or do something wild. And that's what I love about these classic 90s games is you had an over-the-top situation, but in reality, it was still the same formula. You know a beat-em-up, you have to learn the patterns. All the characters are the same, just a different, you know, color, whatever they wanted to put it. But definitely try Final Fight 3. I enjoyed beating it on stream, and I know you can't go wrong with this one. In at number 8 is a fighter, Killer Instinct. Because of the reason that it made it to the top 10, is the over the top announcer. You had amazing characters. It was grungy, it was dark, it was something that you could see and I love the announcer just going epic combo and you could hear it in the arcade, you could hear it on your TV and know immediately what the game was. You didn't even have to have somebody explain it to you. I enjoyed that each fighter had its own style. There was people, regular people, and then there was people that were creatures and so it took all the demons and all the people and threw them together and then you had to battle a boss that was so difficult at the end that when you finally beat it you're screaming at your CRT. Yes, that was me. I screamed at my CRT when I finally knocked that guy down. And the one thing that I loved about this fighter was it didn't just let you cheese the battle. You had to actually use combos. You could cheese your way all the way through but if you didn't know how to do combos and you didn't know how to finish the guy you would be stuck at that part. So love the fighter, gave you a challenge and definitely try it out. At number seven is Street Fighter II Turbo. The reason why I picked this fighter over a couple other fighters is the fact that all the characters are classic. The soundtrack is amazing. The animations, when you hit somebody against an object that was in the screen and every area was completely different and unique for each character. I love that you would go into an area and you go, okay, I see this sign, can I throw, yes, and it destroyed them. The animations when somebody was knocked out, the sounds were classic for like, ooh, stuff like that was amazing. Not only that, it also was balanced. Each fighter had a move that could counter the others. You say, for example, you were like, I'm gonna do a Hadouken. The other character could figure out a move that would knock out the other character. I also loved that it was had bonus stages that made you learn the mechanics of each character and figure out how to destroy like the car, the barrels, and stuff like that. So that is why it's at number seven. At number six is a classic sports game. Very rare do I put sports games on a top ten, but the reason why is because Boom Shakalaka is yelled a lot, and you know what I'm talking about, right? NBA Jam. This is a classic sports game that took a lot of, you know, NBA style, but made it a two-on-two, -two, had an announcer that was funny as hell, and you also had, he's on fire, because the ball would be on fire, 
and you took a character that could swat at each other. Fouls were at the minimal, you could still get in trouble for fouling too much, but you also had a chance to get goaltending and different things like that. It had all the NBA characters from back in the day for the most of the part. You took what you learned and you built upon it and you tried to beat the tournament. And if you beat the tournament, you were number one. So definitely try NBA Jam. I know there's very few on this who's watching would not have played it, but play it in the arcade. It's actually really fun. At number five is Super Mario Kart. And the reason why this racer is on the list is because it's an amazing game. It takes all the classic Mario characters like Bowser, Mario, Peach, and it blends them all together and gives them unique powers and bonuses that they have for each character. Like Bowser is a tank, he will knock you down, not super fast. You have Mario who is well balanced, you have Peach who will just pop and she's usually a floaty character in most of the games. And you have different power-ups and different things you use against each other like shells. And I love that each person has a chance to go from 8th to 1st and it's chaotic. And nobody could win just based on just racing 100%. You can cheese it and knock them out and just take them out and use the CPU against them. <laughs> I loved it. It's an amazing game. Definitely try it out if you haven't. And if you do play it, play it online. There it is on the Super Nintendo Switch online. And you can do two. It's, it's amazing. It's fun. And number four is a game that I did not finish until I was older in life. And that is... The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. This is an amazing RPG game. I understand not everybody considers Zelda an RPG, but you have build up your health, you have different power-ups, you have different things that will, you know, find a sword, go find the Master Sword. This is a very open world kind of game where you just are left to your own devices, you can wander around, you can be lost for hours. But that was the beauty of it. It was a game that lets you go at your own pace. If you wanted to go check out something, you could. You could literally just go to the end if you wanted to. You could go to the end and not have a problem with that. That was what I loved about it, just like Breath of the Wild. If you wanted to go face, you know, Ganon or, or whatever was going on, you could just go and do it. I mean, you were only at three health and you had no fighting that was just like a basic sword, but you were allowed to do that. And that was what I loved about this game. My favorite character that I encountered was the old guy. I'm not going to spoil it too much, but if you played the game, you know what I'm talking about, right? He's a funny character. He's hilarious. And I also loved the end credits. The end credits showed you every point in the game that you went through and you battled. And that was my favorite. It was just amazing. So definitely try it out if you haven't. It's, it's I think it's on the online Switch online store. So it's worth it. At number three is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4 A Turtles in Time. The reason why I love this game was all the levels were a little bit different. You did have a beat em up fighter game, but I love the water level where you were on the water and you had to keep jumping to avoid the mines. You had to battle each of the bosses. They were a little bit different. And Shredder at the end was my favorite because you had to throw the characters at Shredder and knock him out. And if you didn't do that, it took you a long time to beat the guy. But it's a great game. I love the arcade port. They did an amazing job and I just could not put this down and I still can't put this down. I still play it all the time whenever I can. I play it on MAME. I play it on the original hardware. If you have it at a convention, I will pop it in and play it for hours. So definitely get this game, play it. If you have not, what are you doing? Just go for it. At number two is a classic game that I've played and beat a lot, and that is Power Rangers for the Super Nintendo. The reason why this game is on there is because it's also a beat-em-up, but the one thing that was a little bit different than the other beat-em-ups on the Super Nintendo was it had a pattern to it, and each character had a funny jumping animation. Billy was the worst. Like, I don't know what they did to my boy Billy, but <laughs> the poor guy, his jumping animation was over the top. It was corny, but that was the 90s for you. If you had a nerdy character, they just made him even more nerdy by having him a weird jump. But I love the bosses in this. They all had patterns. And once you learned the patterns, you was easy to defeat. You were battling Rita and you had all the monsters from Rita from the, uh, the TV show was amazing. And this game did not fail. When it first released, I picked it up and I just could not put it down. The same thing. And I will say that each character had its own unique feel. I was Trini. Everybody knows I was Trini because of that. She's just 
badass for a reason. It's a great beat em up. Definitely try it out if you have not. And I understand it seems like a kid game, but at the end of the day, it's a classic beat em up and you definitely gotta try it out. And at number one is Super Mario World. And the reason why it's number one is because it was an amazing launch game. It took Super Mario and it made it very, very good. It just took all the benefits of Super Mario 3 and it built it upon it and it made it a beautiful 16-bit game. It took platforming to the next level. It also made every boss fight fun and unique and the patterns were not super hard to understand but that was because again it was geared towards kids but an adult could play it and not have like a moment of like i beat this in five seconds yes you can warp through and beat this in a very short amount of time but if you tried every single world it had a challenge to it and it made you have to think i love the game for that reason bowser was funny i enjoyed bowser he was a great boss fight and I also loved all the power-ups. Power-ups were unique, different, they added a couple new ones, and if they didn't have the hidden areas, I don't think it would be Super Mario World. So if you've never found any of the hidden areas, you definitely gotta try it out. Star World is amazing. You gotta go for it, just play it. That was my top 10, everybody. Yes, it was a hard list to make because there's so many amazing games, so many amazing fighters, beat-em-ups, platformers, just in general, there's RPGs. I didn't grow up with RPGs, so that's why. Please don't attack me in the comments about why isn't this RPG on there. I didn't play RPGs a lot when I was growing up. It wasn't until I was older in life that I started building on that genre. My go-to was platformers, beat-em-ups, different things like that. But if you have a top 10, let me know in the comments. <laughs> please, I understand. I'm going to get a flood of comments about how, why wasn't this game on there? This game is not on there. This top 10 is shit. It's just the way it is. I, I build upon my top 10 based on my personal experiences in my life. And yeah, you can have a top 10 if you want to shout it out. Go for it. If you don't have a top 10, shout out some games. Thank you for watching. If you are new, please consider subscribing. If you're rolling out, please give it a like. Super Nintendo hype, and I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody. She's got the beats. Stand back, she's got the games you need in hand with the just recording. She's in command from 8 bit wonders to the latest craze. Linda, the gamer gal, she's here.